Hi, I'm Dr. Andrew Holden, uh, Director of Interventional Radiology at Auckland Hospital, uh, Auckland, New Zealand, and it's my pleasure to present the uh, primary endpoint results of the Impact AV Access Randomised Control Trial, the uh, safety and efficacy outcomes through six months. These are my disclosures. Well, we know that uh, hemodialysis is uh, the most common method of treating uh, patients with chronic renal insufficiency. In 2016, uh, half a million patients in the United States received hemodialysis at least three times a week. But we also know that arteriovenous fistulae and grafts experience high rates of dysfunction. In terms of the historical use of drug-coated balloons in arteriovenous fistulae, this is best demonstrated by a meta-analysis published in 2016 that was characterised by small patient numbers in multiple studies with wide confidence intervals, but there did seem to be a trend favouring drug-coated balloon over plain balloon angioplasty. However, the authors noted that the body of published evidence remains limited and large multi-centre studies were warranted. Well, the first of these was the uh, BD Bard Lutonix AVIDE trial, a multi center prospective uh, core lab adjudicated randomized control trial of 285 patients, randomized between the Lutonix drug coated balloon and plain balloon angioplasty, with the primary efficacy endpoint being target lesion primary patency at six months, defined as 180 days. Unfortunately, the primary efficacy endpoint in this trial was not met. Subsequent and more recent meta-analyses, including the Lutonix IDE trial, have been published, and these again show a trend favouring drug-coated balloons over plain balloon angioplasty, but the author of these meta-analyses recommended ongoing large multi-centre randomised controlled trials to really try and prove if this effect is real. Well, the IMPACT AV Access IDE trial is such a large multi-centre randomised controlled trial designed to evaluate the safety and effectiveness of the IMPACT AV drug-coated balloon compared to percutaneous transluminal angioplasty for the treatment of stenotic or de novo obstructive lesions of native arterial venous fistula in the upper extremity. This was a trial performed in the United States, New Zealand and Japan. This was a prospective global multi-center one-to-one randomized trial involving 330 patients, initially with two-year follow-up, but uh, recently extended to five-year follow-up. Lesion length was allowed up to 10 centimeters in the native arteriovenous fistulae, with uh, high levels of core lab adjudication, including duplex and angiographic core labs and a clinical events committee. There were 29 sites involved in these sites are listed in this slide. Now the uh, inclusion and exclusion criteria are listed in this particular slide. You can see that uh, native fistulae needed to be created if at least uh, 60 days prior to the index procedure and have been successfully used. Target vessel diameter of 4 to 12 millimetres. Stents were not allowed uh, in uh, the access site unlike some other trials. Central venous stenosis had to be successfully treated before the patients could be enrolled. The inclusion criteria, as mentioned, uh, involved de novo or non-stented re-stenotic lesions uh, located in the access circuit with a stenosis greater than 50% diameter loss. And as mentioned, the uh, target lesion needed to be uh, less than 100 millimetres in length. The impact AV access primary endpoints included primary safety endpoint, uh, a serious adverse event rate within 30 days, and a primary effectiveness endpoint, that is target lesion primary patency through six months, defined as freedom from clinically driven target lesion revascularization or access circuit thrombosis measured through six months post-procedure. Now, I should point out that for this trial, the six month endpoint was in fact to 210 days rather than 180 days used in some other trials. In terms of the uh, baseline characteristics, there was no significant difference between the two treatment arms. There was a high prevalence of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and type 2 uh, diabetes, as you might expect, in both arms of the trial. In terms of the uh, AV access fistula type, 50% were radiocephalic fistulae in both arms of the trial, and there was an equal, equal distribution in both arms, with the remainder on both arms predominantly being brachiocephalic and brachiobacillic fistulae. 
In terms of the lesion length, actually, the, uh, in the drug-coated balloon arm, the lesion length was, a, was statistically significantly longer than in the uh, standard PTA arm, measuring 47 millimetres compared to 40 millimetres. The non-dominant arm was used uh, in most cases as a standard practice. In terms of uh, lesion characteristics, 70% uh, or the majority of these were re-stenotic rather than uh, de novo lesions. The actual lesion uh, location was defined into uh, six locations by the angiographic core lab. And as you can see, the most common locations were the anastomosis, the venous outflow, and the cephalic arch. In terms of uh, clinical characteristics, there was no significant difference between the two treatment arms, the common presentations being decreased blood flow and elevated venous pressure. In terms of uh, procedural uh, characteristics, again, this was not significantly different between the two treatment arms. Device success was 100% in both arms. Procedural success was core lab adjudicated in this trial, and, and that hasn't been the same in other trials. That is defined as a successful treatment with a residual stenosis of less than 30% diameter loss. And again, this was not significantly different in both arms. Clinical success, that is the ability to resume hemodialysis, was 100% in both arms. Now, if we have a look at the headline primary effectiveness endpoint, that is the target lesion primary patency through 210 days, you can see that for the impact AV DCB, it was 82.2% for the standard uh, angioplasty, 59.5%, a highly significant difference of 22.8% between the two treatment arms. Similarly, there was a highly significant difference in clinically driven target lesion revascularization through 210 days of 22.1%. If we have a look at this displayed in a Kaplan-Meier plot, you can see we've included the 180-day uh, patencies uh, for comparison to other trials but the headline 210-day primary Kaplan-Meier patency for a drug-coated balloon was 81.4%, and for uh, standard percutaneous angioplasty, 59.0%. An unrivaled difference in patency that's been achieved in a randomized controlled trial for AV access. If we have a look at the entire access circuit, then access circuit primary patency was also highly statistically different. Uh, the drug-coated balloon arm of 73.2%, standard PTA arm of 48.0%, a delta of 25.2%. Likewise, re-intervention in the access circuit, there was a very significant difference, again, of 25.2% between the two treatment arms. This is demonstrated again in a Kaplan-Meier curve of patency, and here you can see at 210 days, the uh, access circuit patency for the drug-coated balloon arm was 72.5%, 48.0% uh, for the uh, standard PTA arm. And I like to point out the widening of the two curves with time is very imp important and impressive for access circuit patency. If we have a look at the primary safety endpoint, that is uh, freedom from serious adverse events uh, up to 30 days, uh, I'm pleased to say this was not significantly different between the two treatment arms, 4.2 versus 4.4%. Now in this slide, we're looking at the number of reinterventions that patients experienced in both arms to 210 days. The number of reinterventions in the drug-coated balloon arm was 40, and the number of reinterventions in the standard PTA arm was 91. There was a 56% reduction in number of interventions if patients received drug-coated balloon angioplasty. I think this figure really resonates not only with uh, clinicians, but with patients. Likewise, a 47.6% reduction in the number of interventions to maintain access circuit patency. If we have a look at a slide now of freedom from serious adverse events, as I mentioned, to 30 days, these two curves were not different. But as time goes on, you can see progressive separation of the two curves, and that is largely driven by the higher re-intervention rates in the standard PTA arm.
Well, we know that the uh, FDA uh, convened a panel in June of this year looking at paclitaxel safety, and they did address the issue of paclitaxel for indications outside of the superficial femoral artery, and the panel noted that a benefit risk profile for these patients may be different given the high mortality rates for these patients within two to three years. And in terms of data, we do have this publication showing that the US two-year mortality for patients on hemodialysis was 33.2%, and uh, probably at least twice that of patients of claudicants over two years. This recent meta-analysis, specifically looking at mortality after paclitaxel-coated devices and dialysis access, uh, did not show any evidence of a mortality risk for patients receiving drug-coated balloon angioplasty compared to plain balloon angioplasty. Now, I've shown you uh, in the impact av uh, ide trial the six-month data. For mortality, we were able to access the 12-month all-cause mortality data and as you can see, there is absolutely no difference in all-cause mortality between the two treatment arms, 90.6% versus 90.4%. So no mortality signal with paclitaxel, at least to 12 months. So what about the uh, next steps for this exciting trial data? Well, as I mentioned, the trial has been approved for extension to five years. The six month results I've shared with you are being prepared for manus manuscript submission and the 12 month results will be presented next year. So in conclusion, the IMPACT AV Access trial is a multi-center prospective randomized controlled trial comparing drug-coated balloon to standard percutaneous angioplasty and AV Access that well and truly met its primary effectiveness endpoint. A six-month target lesion primary patency of 82.2% in the drug-coated balloon arm compared to 59.5% in the percutaneous angioplasty arm. The trial also met its primary safety endpoint of 4.2% in the drug-coated balloon arm versus 4.4% major adverse event rate in the percutaneous angioplasty arm. And impressively, by treating patients with a drug-coated balloon, patients experienced a 56% reduction in reinterventions to 210 days compared to standard percutaneous angioplasty. So these are very impressive results and we look forward to further data from the Impact AV Access Randomized Control Trial over the next months. Thanks very much.